Well, obviously, it was a very exciting weekend um, for obviously some of you guys that were there and others that made the 2,000 mile travel. Um, you know, it was obviously exciting, but I think the biggest thing was, you know, a lot of the different things that we had to go through this past week, you know, in the preparation, the, the heat. I mean, there's just, there's an amazing amount of things get out there with travel, with uh, all the different things for those guys to come out and play the way they did. I think that's what I'm most proud of. Um, and, and all the stuff that we've done, everybody said, how much did you make of the game? How much did you put into the game? Well, we, we prepare like we always do. Uh, opening games are always difficult, always tough. Uh, traveling 2,000 miles obviously is, is a difficult situation, um, playing in a venue like the Rose Bowl. But the thing is, is you come away with, uh, with a great feeling, not just, yes, because of victory, but also because of the way guys played. I mean, if you really look at it, I think we had Brian Wright, who's co-defensive player of the week um, for, the, for the league. And in reality, for us, we had a decision whether it was for us defensively, Marquise Copeland or Cortez Broughton could have been players of the game. We ended up having um, Marquise Copeland as our defensive player of the week. On offense, obviously, Mike Warren was the player of the game, but very well could have been two or three different offensive linemen that we could have elected as player of the game. Special teams-wise, we had a true freshman who was player of the game on special teams. So I think as we look back at it, probably not once that we have last year, uh, you know, at least a, a choice on, on a lot of different guys that played well. I didn't say they were perfect. You know, yes, obviously things are much better when you win, but the opportunity to make some choices from guys who really played good football. Um, we got a long way to go. I'm not saying we're there, um, but I do believe that uh, that's the most exciting thing is to see those guys, how they handled some adversity, how they handled the situations, um, to have our older guys play like they did. And then to have some young guys, some true freshman guys show up, I think is uh, where we're most excited. But the difficult thing is you come back, you don't have a whole lot of time to celebrate, which is understandable. That's how college football is. But even more importantly is you walk yourself into a rivalry week. And I think that's where we got to make sure that this is what this is all about. Um, rivalry weeks are, to me, what make college football great. There's a lot of things that happen, a lot of different things. Um, but for us, rivalry week is about one thing, and it's respect. Respect your the who you're playing, but a respect for the rivalry and how you prepare, how you go about your business and everything that you do. So it'll be an intriguing week, obviously, off of a, a big victory for us with a lot of questions and people want to talk about it. Um, but for us as a program, as a team, we got to really do a great job at respecting the rivalry, get ourselves back to work, and making sure we're well prepared for Saturday night. I think that's the ability to go on the road um, is no better way to kind of develop some of the things that you want to do in your locker room because, you know, you don't after the celebration, you know, usually at home, you, you have 10, 15 minutes in the locker room, you celebrate guys are around each other and they're they're off, you know, with family and with different people. When you're on the road, the reality is a lot of those things that happen that you get to do within the within your team. So. Uh, we proved a lot to each other, and I just mean about the way the game went. That's the, that's the thing that you're happiest about. Is we weren't by far perfect. There's a lot of opportunities we missed. There's a lot of opportunities they missed. Um, we made the plays when we needed to, but the reality is what we proved to each other is in tough situations with guys cramping up, uh, with the heat, with traveling 2,000 miles. When, when Brian Wright goes down, Joel DeBlanco can go right in there and doesn't miss a beat. When James Wiggins goes down, you know, uh, Murph steps in and doesn't miss a beat for us, makes a big play on fourth down. Josiah Gara goes down, cramps up, and, and Huber goes in and makes some big plays for us as a tight end. What you're starting to see is that development, and I think that those are the things that you, that you feel like, not just being on the road, but you were able to overcome a lot of different things. Coach, you made the switch very early at quarterback and going from a senior to a redshirt freshman. Your thoughts on doing that basically right on the beginning of the game? Well, we, Maybe it looks really good, but the reality is, you know, I didn't say it to you guys in here. We, we had a plan um, from about Wednesday on. Our plan was to go with, with Hayden for the first two series and then to put Desmond in for at least the third and the fourth series and then kind of really just kind of keep working with the guys. And you've seen it happen a little bit more if you watch some Thursday night ball with college football with, you know, some of the things that are happening with older quarterbacks and younger quarterbacks, and that was our plan. Um, so it wasn't like just because Hayden turned the ball over or we didn't score on the first two drives. Our plan was on the third drive to, to go with Desmond and give him an opportunity that he's earned. Um, and then the, we would kind of play the game as it rolled. And, you know, things started to happen. Momentum started to happen. So we had had those conversations. And I think that's where also I feel good about what the offensive staff has done. 
is we sat down with those guys and, and kind of talked about that before the game. And really, more so even to Dez, to say, hey, our plan is the third series for you to go in. If we score on the first one, maybe the second one, if we're going well, you know, plans do change. So just know that this is what our plan is. We're, we're going to you know, go about it. But uh, if, if it does change, I don't want you to think that we're not telling you the truth. Let's just be honest with what we're doing. So we had had a plan. We went with the plan. Um, how that ended up rolling the rest of the game, I think we just kind of stuck with where, where we were. I think we still got to have an opportunity. They both deserve that. You know, Hayden's played a lot of ball for us around here. Um, and that's the way we're going into this right now, is still having an opportunity for both guys. We, we didn't make a decision till Wednesday <clears throat> of last week after practice is how we were really going to go with the plan. Um, so I don't think that we'll make a decision till Wednesday of, of this week. It, what exactly will the plan be and how do we go about rolling these guys? We, we know we need both of them. Hayden's done a lot of great things for us around here. Um, I'm very proud of the way that the whole handled it, the locker room, how he was on the sidelines and everything. That's what gives us the opportunity uh, to eliminate some of those human elements that you have in every position, but more so at the quarterback position because everybody's aware of it. So, does, so who starts What's that? I don't think we've said yet. I, mean, you... I don't think it's Wednesday. Okay. So we'll probably keep playing the game with you guys just like we do with everybody right now. <laughs> we're ways away from that. Um, no, I, I don't know. I mean, we're not a real public group. I mean, it's not like an 18 to 22 year old who, yeah, we announce it's, it's all via Twitter. No, I don't think that uh, that'll be something that we really do. But, you know, it's, it's amongst our team so that those guys understand uh, we'll have a plan. And we, we want to go about this thing preparing the right way and what those guys have done. We don't want to just be judged on a small body, just like we are as a program. It's hard not to get excited about what, you know, having a big victory and things like that. But, you know, that's why, that's why you play a long season. So a lot of those situations we want to kind of look at the same way as, you know, we, we know darn well that this is a long year. And, you know, Des got beat up a little bit too. I mean, there was an opportunity that, that Hayden had a chance to go right back in. And I'm happy to say that he was well prepared and, and ready to do it. So. Well, we, we could take an awful long time. Um, there's a lot of things. People would just say, hey, you just, you know, you had guts and you went for it. No, I mean, there's a lot of other things that go into, you know, making those decisions. And I think the most important thing is, is it's, you know, in what we're trying to build and what we're trying to be about. I think it was, a, it was something more to our team. Like I said, I wasn't worried about the outside and worried about the nation and worried about college football. No, I was worried about the guys in that locker room and the things that we preach from the time we started camp as we move forward about trust and belief and love and those kinds of things. Well, it goes two ways and they have to experience it via us. Now, we as a coach have to make sure we don't put them in a situation where, you know, we can't be successful or it's not the, what we believe is the right decision. So you got to be smart about that as opposed to just trying to gain those trust and respect. But it was an opportunity that we felt like this is a time for us to put, the, put it on the shoulders of, you know, our senior offensive line and, and believe in what it is that they're doing. How much do you worry as a younger, newer head coach about being a second guest? Like younger? Did you say that younger? <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> About being what? Second guess, just generally. I had an opportunity um, to take over, obviously, that year in 2011. And the first phone call I think I got was from Bobby Knight. And his first question to me was, hey, do you care what people think of you? And originally I said, no. I only said, well, good, because if you do, you, you aren't going to make it in this business. You got to know what you believe in. You got to do what you believe in. You got to continue to do those things. And people will follow you and, you know, and that was one thing that has always stuck with me. So, no, I didn't. I, I'm more worried about those guys in that locker room, you know, and how they would look at you if, if maybe if you didn't, or if you did, and you thought and you were explained to them that this was our best decision and this was the best choice. Um, but in, in the heat of the moment, in those situations, no, I, I, I didn't really, it didn't come into consideration. No, they're, they're, all those things go into it. And I think that's where you can't sit here and explain um, the different things. Those were scenarios that, you know, I feel I'm in a lot better place as a coach right now. Um, just looking ahead and, and trying to have those ideas of what, as you go down that field, as the ball's being punted, okay, let's, let's think about these things in your head and what you've seen, what you've done. Um, you know, some people would say, oh, that's just a 
gutsy call and a good decision. No, I, it's a very calculated decision and a very calculated risk. Um, you know, that has a lot of emotions and energy involved in it too. But I think the thing about you know, making good decisions, it's about eliminating the, the, you know, the emotional side of things when you make those decisions and be able to go with them. Do you feel like you would have made that same decision in a similar situation last year? I don't know that I would have. I don't know that I would have. You know, and I think that's some of those, you know, you know play to win, play not to lose. I mean, there's a lot of different things. But, um, you know, I think it really comes down to the culture of what it is that we want to be able to do. And guys building that trust and belief in them and, you know, with it being calculated as well. It's not just a gut feel. There's a lot more things that, that go into it. <laughs> no, I, unfortunately, I, I'm one of those guys that tries to avoid them as much as possible. Just because the fact of, you know, you try to downplay it's Yeah, it's, it's one. We got, we got a lot more. And um, unfortunately, you try, I try not to let myself, you know, enjoy too much but uh i wouldn't say there's anybody in particular you, you know there's a lot of people that that did take notice and watch and you know what it means is they care and i think that all those old co colleagues you've coached with and things like that uh, you know the guys that, that coached here there's there's a lot of former players or former coaches um that were here that have the pride in this program that that really to me made me more um excited than anything. The George Warhops who played here in the 80s that has been coaching the NFL for 30 years. The, you know, even the Kerry Combs that, you know, that, that coached here and takes incredible pride, not just in the Bearcats, but the city and things like that, as opposed to some of my friends and buddies that, you know, are good friends and will be there with you through thick and thin. But uh, I'm more impressed with the, the, the pride that a lot of the former Bearcats have in it. Really haven't been out underneath the rock. We got home about 6 a.m. and um, you know, but but our guys. That's why it's exciting today to go out to practice. You know, we, we practiced on Sunday night. We didn't we didn't really change our routine. We moved some things back. Um, you know, energy is a is a huge deal. We talk about it in momentum and games and things like that. But it's that way in you know in your locker room and in your season. So uh, it's a definitely a different feel. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, last year we won four games and, and a lot of them <clears throat> you felt almost relieved to win a game. And which is much different. And so, yeah, we're going to, we got to build upon it. We got to continue to, to, you know, keep the energy and the momentum that's going and, and be positive about what we're doing. You obviously talked a lot about Mike Warren and the offensive line. How much help were the tight ends? Because I noticed a lot of two and three tight end sets and those guys. They, they, did a, they did a really good job, too. And I think that that's where you're seeing some of the differences of what we're having the ability to do is those guys are, are versatile. And so that, that gives us some different things. I think last year in our, in our league, you didn't see a whole lot of tight ends on the line of scrimmage. And I know this wasn't in our league and things like that, but there's some, some things that hopefully will be a little bit different then. And, and we've got some depth there. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't play uh, any of our freshmen at that spot, but, but they will. Leonard Taylor will play. When Josh Wiley is, is back, he will play. And I think that's going to be something we can continue to grow to. Well, I, I, I think it's the offensive line play, and I don't mean they're perfect. I think, you know, you, you look back and you say, hey, you know, Brian Wright's player of the, player of the or co-player of the, of the game in the, in the league, and, you know, and then you say, well, Cortez was right there. Maybe he could have been, you know, player of the game as well in the league. Or, or, and then you really start to evaluate it and you say, wow, Marquise Copeland, that, you know, played as well as anybody. And just some things that go unnoticed. Yes, he had seven tackles. Yes, you know, he, he led the team in tackles on defense. But um, there's a lot of little things that, that we try to point out as a program that make us excited. Uh, I, I couldn't, I'd be, I'd be remiss if I sat here and, and said that I was going to give you every single one of them. But I know this, that you know, when you take some offensive plays and, and you're going to show them to the team, you know, when, when they're not big plays, and we had a couple incomplete passes or, or two-yard gains that we showed to the team to say, this is really impressive. You know, I know it might not in the stat book look like anything um, as an incomplete pass or, or a two-yard gain, but this is what's really impressive about what we're going to continue to build upon. He missed a series, too. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, my question is, that, I don't see you doing anything to him. And part B is, are you going to be able to work? Is Dokes going to be able to play? Or we still don't know. I mean, we definitely got to get some more rotation there. Dokes obviously wasn't available for the game. Um, we don't know what his availability will is just yet, but we feel like we've got a lot of depth there, and we got to do a better job. I mean, that's one of those things afterwards you evaluate, and 
you know, if you don't have a plan, it's really hard to adjust the plan in that third and fourth quarter. Like the first time you're going to put Charles McClellan in, you know, is late in the third quarter when, you know, it's a really tight game. Or the first time you're going to put Taylor Boos in the game who, you know, sat out all the spring ball with his shoulder, blew his shoulder out last year. You know, we feel like he's going to be a great contrib contributor to us. But it's a little bit more difficult at those situations. So we got to do a better job knowing, you know, what we're going to have available. Um, before the week begins, uh, but right now we don't know. Is Mike basically okay to go? I would hope. I, you know, we haven't we haven't gone to practice yet, so we'll we'll see, and, and we'll be smart based on on how he feels. You coach a lot of defensive football. How much different is it planning when you have Copeland brought in right in the middle of your defense to kind of anchor things? We, we talk about you, you got to be strong down the middle. It doesn't matter what sports you're in. You know, if you're not strong down the middle, if you don't have an opportunity to be strong down the middle, your foundation is really, really weak, whether it's the center on the offensive line, whether it's that nose guard, that middle linebacker, those guys in the interior. Uh, it makes it very difficult. And, uh, you know, they give us an opportunity uh, to be more aggressive. They give us an opportunity uh, to turn them guys a little bit more loose. And I think that's, you know, that's what we want to build upon. <laughs> it's it's the ability to handle it. I think that's for the first time since I've been here, and probably the first time in a while. I I don't know that in the last couple of years, but um, for a lot of these guys, they've never probably had to handle some success. And I don't. One game is one game now, but some success meaning the text message. If I got text messages, you know they did. You know, so how do you handle that? You know, criticism or praise. Either one can kill you if you let it affect you. If you swallow it and you know, either think you're a lot better than you really are or you start to become negative in your mind. So this is just another challenge for us to be able to handle some, some positive things. Um, it's going to be big for Brian Wright. You know, as a guy that's got to be a leader of our team and do a lot of things that you know, I've challenged to be a leader. And a leader's got to be consistent. I mean, I'd say one of the greatest attributes of a leader is if he doesn't have consistency, who's really going to follow him? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. And, and just for us to try to secure ourselves down the middle, um, I think is, is a big deal for us. And, and, you know, he does a lot of different things. And that's why, you know, I'm every bit as excited to say, oh, he goes down with a cramp and, you know, you don't bat an eye about Joel going in there and, and executing and doing the things we need to do. Um, I think that's all a little bit of the evolution of us, you know, understanding who our guys are, how we need to play for those guys to be successful as we move forward. I don't know. It has a lot to do with it. We probably <laughs> had six, eight guys go down on Monday with, with a similar situation. Um, our guys do a great job. I mean, there, there, was, some, there was fluids being pumped in at halftime. Um, I'm not going to – maybe the, the shortened halftime has something to do with it too. You know, Josiah Degara comes in at halftime is okay. As he goes back out, he only you know, had 12 minutes. Maybe he had 10 minutes to sit in the locker room. He goes back out cramps before the second half even begins. So uh, there's a lot of things that we all have to get better at. You know, and I think some of those things are those rotations and, and being confident in those guys that are behind them to not wait till they're dead tired because once you get to that point, it's really hard to get back. If you can handle it and take care of it a little bit beforehand, now you can manage things a lot better. So that's where we got to do a lot better job as a coaching staff. That's where we got to do a lot better job in, in our preparation and plan uh, to give these guys an opportunity and give our team an opportunity. Like most analysts will tell you, what, the last ones are the last ones. The reality is rivalry weeks are all about respect. And understanding the history of the rivalry, understanding what it's all about, understanding that what you see on film is not what you're going to get. And I don't mean by the schemes and things like that. I just mean the effort level, the, the intensity. Um, so I think it's much more. Yes, they, they understand. You know, they understand. I, I brought it up to them that we've been outplayed. Last year we were outplayed, I think, in the last five games. It was still one, but have been outplayed. And, so we're aware of it. Now it's what kind of respect do we have? There's a lot of guys in this program that, you know, maybe don't know as much about the rivalry, haven't had the history of the rivalry. Maybe they grew up here, and they, there's some that do. Um, but it's our job as a coaching staff to make sure they understand what this is all about. As a defensive guy your whole career, Luke, have you ever wondered why offenses don't go for it more? 
No, I don't, I don't know that I've thought about it as much as that. I, you know, if, if you go back in a little bit of my history, I'd say that Coach Tress probably would have called me and said, what the heck are you doing? You know, but then you might have, you know, Coach Meyer might have said, yeah, that's exactly what I would do. And I'm not saying you're either, but I think that you got to figure out who you are and who your program wants to be. And, and you got to move forward and you got to make some of those decisions. Um, but. I don't know. I mean, some people had said to me, they, do you think they put 12 guys on the field on purpose to try to get you to see if you would go for it? And I'm like, no, because if I'm the other coach, I want them to kick the, I want them to kick the field goal. I want them to just give me the – I want the ball to have an opportunity to win. Whether I need a touchdown or a field goal, I just want an opportunity. So that's some of those things that go into your thinking as well. People actually – someone actually asked me that about the 12 guys on the field. Somebody brought that up to me. Not, it wasn't a question in, in, the, in the media or during the media, but someone said, hey, do you think he did that on purpose? I'm like, if he did, he is, he is thinking way ahead. And maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm not worried about what he was thinking. I just know in my mind what we were thinking and what opportunities we had. It kind of got lost so early with the pitch play. What did you think of that? It's an ejection. There, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, it's the play we showed the whole team on Sunday. Just... I mean, our, our job as coaches is to make sure guys learn. You know, I'm not disappointed at him. I'm not upset at him. I mean, um, it, it happened. It's, it's unfortunate, but there's no doubt that it's, that we don't, it doesn't belong in, in football. Um, and he, we will learn from it. I think every, hopefully everybody on our team will learn from it. Hopefully you know, other people use it as an example as well. It's not a close call. It's not a, you know, ah, maybe it wasn't. No, it's, it's, it is. And, uh, you know, it's not belligerent. Or, I mean, I'm not saying he, that's who he is, but... Uh, the key is for us to learn from it. The only thing I was upset about is they never gave me any explanation. I didn't hear it over the headset. They're up there ready to snap the football, and Cortez is trying to tell them, you're ejected from the game, and you got to go. And they're trying to snap the ball. And I run on the field, oh, no, coach, he's been kicked out. Like, I didn't even hear it, so. Big time. It really is. I mean, there's all the emotions and all the things that are going on. But it, I mean, if you go back and look at Perry, to me, Perry's is one that you shouldn't be ejected for. But that's just me. It's not belligerent. It's not deliberate. It's not direct. You know, it is what it is. Um, so it's not, Perry's has nothing to do with the adrenaline, the emotion. But that is a big deal based on, you know, personal fouls, penalties, and things that, uh, you know, you can't have and, and still be victorious in, in big games like, like we got this week. Just a couple coaches. <laughs> yeah, worry. They, you know, they're hustling, running on the field. They might have pulled a couple hamstrings, a couple calves. They're probably not in as quite as good a shape as we need. You know, got to worry about them going down on today's practice if it's 100 and some degrees on that turf. But I think our 18 to 22 year olds are going to be able to bounce back and and uh, be ready because it's it's a big week. And I think they understand that. They know that. And I don't want to make, you know. Not a big deal of, of, of a great win and, and something that's a, it's awesome for our program and the guys in our program, what I'm talking about. Um, but it's, it's so difficult in college football, you know, to when you have a win like that to come back and now you're jumping into a rivalry week that is all about preparation and all about respect. Um, you got to shift gears real quick. So even as a coach, you got to do it. Will you have a practice or two at Fall Brown this week? Or just... uh, we'll go down there on Friday, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're nice enough to allow us to, to use that down there. Because it's different. I mean, those that don't understand now, I mean, the, the numbers are different. The hashes are ticks. I mean, when you're specific about what you do, uh, there's a lot of things that you're used to having. You know, you're used to knowing exactly where the top of those numbers are, exactly where the bottom of the no numbers are, you know, exactly how wide the hashes are, 13 to third, how far outside that. I mean, so it's a big deal for us to get down there, too. I do, and, and I just mean that in the sense that I told you before, people don't get in all places, um, but to get in there and just the history, the locker room, you know, all this stuff in there, you see guys are taking pictures, which is great, and let's do that on Friday, and then when we come here on Saturday, it's all business. Treading a little lightly here, do some of the uh, odds makers and people who do that have you even a slight underdog? Yeah, we are. We are. We're an underdog. You make of it what it is. I mean, that's why I said we weren't worried about well, what kind of we're going to show the world. We're going to get the respect of the. You don't get the respect of the college football and all those people in one in one week. I, I understand that. 
That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about the respect and the trust and the love and the things we build in this room. That's why that's the most important thing to us.